today here at Urban Surf Melbourne. This is a world-class destination for surfers trying to learn surfing, get surf lessons, or for people who want to learn surfing in a controlled environment, this is the place. I'm all geared up and I'm gonna take my dry lessons before I jump out there and take surf lessons. So Sam here is gonna help me and show me how to actually uh, practice. It might look funny, but certainly it's gonna help me. So, um, as we head out into the water, mm -hmm. uh, the best way to control your board is with one hand on the back and one hand on the front. So as you're heading out into the water, you do wanna keep the nose of the board pointing out towards the waves. Mm -hmm. So as the waves come, the board will go up and over. Yeah. You don't wanna have the board pointing sideways because it might flip up as the waves come. Okay. So when it is your turn to catch the wave, be asked uh, by your surf coach to turn the board around. Okay. The easiest way to do that is by pushing down on the tail. That will lift the nose out of the water and you can steer the board around. Mm -hmm. It's um, quite heavy out there in the water, so it's really hard to pick your board up and turn it around. Yeah. Um, you really just want to push down on the tail and turn the board around. Awesome. So, um, when the wave is coming, yeah. the surf coach will ask you to get on the board. Mm -hmm. It sounds really easy to do it on land, yeah. but out there in the water it's a little bit more difficult. Um, the best way to get on your board is from the side. Mm -hmm. we put our hands on the rails, yep. put our chest on, and then our feet come on behind it. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So when you're on the board, it's important that you have your feet off the back. Yeah. Okay. Because if you're too far forward, uh -huh. the nose will go under and do okay. what's called a nose dive. And nose dives aren't very fun. Okay, it's um, gonna hurt your nose. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So the board will go under the water, so you don't want to be too far forward. Mm -hmm. If you're too far back on the board, yep. the nose of the board will go up in the air, yep. and it's like having the handbrake on in a car. You just won't uh, go anywhere. Okay. So our positioning is really important with our feet just off the back. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. So your coach in the water might say, move forward a little bit, move back a little bit. It's just to stop your nose diving yep. or to take the handbrake off. Okay. Cool. So what was the three terms you told me when you were teaching me the dry... Yep, so our, our pop-up techniques, they all start with the chicken wings like chicken this. Wings. So our hands come underneath our ribs. Yep. Um, and then we use our rock climber pop-up, so which is where we put our foot up to our knee. Yeah. And we push up and then the yep. other foot comes through the middle. Okay. Um, I think that was the last one, Just staying nice and low. Okay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Cool. <laughs> Urban Surf Melbourne have picked a fantastic location for their venue because this is just a 20 minute drive from the CBD located in Tullamarine. This is a very, very, very beautiful space. I'm super excited today because I'm going to be joining James and Sean who have got lots more to tell about Urban Surf, the concept, the journey and what happened from its inception until today. With me here today are James and Sean, the two pillars of Urban Surf, and they're gonna share with me some exciting stories about what happens here. So James, you've got a spectacularly rich surf culture here, and I know that it did not happen overnight, right? There has to be a story behind it. So can you tell me more about that, how this all started? Sure. Well, you mentioned there that Australia and, and Melbourne and Victoria has an incredibly strong uh, surf culture. One of the challenges with that surf culture is that waves, um, while they're all over the place, good quality waves, great waves to learn in or great waves to surf in, can sometimes be really hard to access and especially for people that maybe don't live on the coast or have grown up in that community. So the fundamental idea of urban surf was to make surfing more accessible to more people. Um, so here in Tullamarine we have a great location where you know, 20 minutes, half an hour from most of Melbourne, and people can come out here and know that there's a safe, consistent wave. So for us, that fundamental thing underpinning our day-to-day -day and our passion project in the park is to make surfing more accessible to more people so more people can enjoy the great benefits of the surfing lifestyle. It's great from a, a physical health perspective, it's great from a mental health perspective. When you mentioned there, obviously, the community that we've built around it, there's some great community benefits. Getting in the water, sharing waves with different people, having different conversations is an amazing thing. So it was about a seven-year journey from the initial idea of urban surf to actually getting this amazing facility out of the ground. Um, when we opened in January 2020, it was just such a thrill to open the doors and see all sorts of different people come in and have their very first surf experience all the way up to world champions having incredible experiences on some of our other lives. 
Wow. Uh, so for people who who never had access to such a surfing culture, who, who do not come from that background, knowing that this can be done in a controlled environment is reassuring. But what sort of additional safety measures do we have in place here um, to give them that additional layer sure. of confidence? Yep. Yeah. So um, our safety starts from um, before you even arrive at Urban Surf. We've got a lot of information, videos and photos on our website and it really guides you on what your skill level is and what's the best product for you. So we do that education piece which is really important from that step on the website. So you buy the right ticket and you come to us and there's all those procedures at every step of the way we've got our staff that are very educated and well trained on uh, surfing and they take you through every single process and they, they give you safety briefing and uh, if you've never surfed before you can come and do a lesson with us perfectly controlled environment the waves are the perfect size every single time and you just have a great day with the instructor that they teach you how to surf teach you how to pop up and that is truly the Australian experience So can you just tell us what's going on behind us? It seems very busy and people are enjoying. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone's having a great time out there. So behind us is the Urban Surf Lagoon. It's about 120 metres by 120 metres. So it's actually the largest recreational swimming facility in the Southern Hemisphere. To give a scale, you could take the MCG and whack the MCG down in the middle of the pool and it would fit. So okay. it's a really huge lagoon. We can see the right-hand side of the lagoon. There's the opposite side is the left-hand side of the lagoon. Um, and that gives the actual scale. It's two parts to the actual lagoon, so you can see out the back we have what's known as the point, and that's our unbroken waves for our more competent surfers, um, from people that can pop up and start to trim, um, that have maybe had you know three or four lessons with us, all the way through to world champions getting barreled and doing aerials and all those sorts of things. On the inside, you can see the people in both the white and the green rash vests. They're enjoying some of our group learn to surf classes. So this is one of our progression classes. They've probably had one or two of our first time classes and they're now just learning to ride some of the uh, unbroken waves. You can see the instructors standing in the yellow jerseys, so really, really safe. You're only in chest deep water. There's no crazy rips or currents that are gonna take, um, take them off their feet. Yeah. And even if they did, you can see we've got lifeguards all around the pool. So there's a really, really great safe environment and the waves are perfect and predictable every time. And this is what Urban Surf is all about. People being able to come in here no matter how you surf and having an amazing, safe, consistent, accessible experience and enjoying, uh, I suppose, surfing and all its benefits. So what about sustainability? Um, do you rely on any specific energy to run the whole system? Tell us more about that. Yeah, so sustainability is important to Urban Surf and uh, Urban Surf has partnered with Momentum Energy. Um, we get most of our energy from wind farms in Tasmania. Uh, furthermore, uh, most of our concrete has come from recycled concrete to build the floor. Um, we're also busy uh, in the process of putting solar panels on all of our roofs so that we really drive that message home. Um, we're also going to have electrical ve electric vehicle charging points uh, in our parking. So great little initiatives um, for our business. Yeah, certainly. It's the tiny steps that matter uh, towards achieving the big goal. Clearly you're doing something right here. Um, using sustainable forms of energy, sustainable materials for construction definitely contributes a lot and goes a long way. Thank you. So what about the events, um, other events we have in place here for surfers who are not just here for surfing but also some sort of other enjoyment or even for spectators um, who are just here for some you know, not just surfing, but yeah. something additional. Absolutely, there's a heap of different experiences for people, whether they're coming for a surf lesson and want to spend more time at the site, or they're accompanying friends and family, or they want to come down here for some of our events. So you can come in just as a spectator. We have five and $10 spectator pass. There's nowhere else in the world you could get right up over the top of people surfing these amazing waves and really watch what's going on in the water. That's an amazing thing that a lot of people like to come and do. We have our restaurant behind us, which is Three Blue Ducks. So Andy Allen from MasterChef, he's one of the restaurateurs. So amazing food and beverage. You, can, you don't even need to get a spectator pass. You can come in, sit in the beer garden, eat some great food, drink some great drip beverages, and watch all the surfing action going on. Through summer, we run a huge range of events. So we're standing in the court right now, um, every Saturday and Sunday in November, December, and then again in February, March. We set up uh, live music, live acoustic music on Saturdays and Sundays. We have a bar, and you can come down here and just have a great, and we like to think of it as like a bar and bay surf experience, sitting there listening to great music, having a great time with friends and family, and just enjoying the ambience of surfing going on in the background. 
Then at different times through the year we run some major events. So at the end of winter we run an event called Winter Jam where we have a surf competition, we have snowboarding, we have live music and uh, we sort of get a thousand people on site for that. And then on the 10th of December this year, 2022, um, we're hosting the first ever World Surf League event uh, in a wave pool in Australia uh, and the first ever utilising the sort of technology that we use. So Australia's best surfers coming down, we'll have live music on site, $10 gets you in and it'll just be an incredible day and you can get up close and personal with some of the best surfing in the world. So I think for a lot of people, um, it's sort of a, a stepping uh, stone pro. So a lot of people, particularly in the north, if they haven't surfed before, they'll often come out here just to look around or have a bite to eat or watch the surfing. And then they just want to get involved themselves. And then they're doing a learn to surf class. And the next thing you know, they're having a great time on a regular basis surfing. Sounds like a fun place to be. Even if you're not surfing, there's so many activities you can come here for. Clearly the December 10th, World Surf League is one to be part of. I'm very excited. A $10 pass if it can get me and if it can get me very close to some world renowned great surfers, I'd be here in a heartbeat. Now with surfing, there's usually a misconception that um, it's huge, largely misrepresented, so not all kinds of people and all kinds of gender have equal representation within surfing but contradicting and contrary to that um, I noticed that you've had a girls go urban surf day here or week here um, tell us about that yeah absolutely I think one of the challenges in surfing if waves in a good break there's a limited amount of waves so there's a lot of competition around those waves so traditionally surfing has been dominated by men that live in the coast and come from a fairly traditional sort of background um, one of the great things here is that you don't compete for waves. So when you're in the lineup, everyone is allocated a wave. It's a very clear um, lineup to work through. And so because you take away that um, competition for waves, it's a much more welcoming environment to surf. And so we've organically seen a really great growth in women surfing. Last uh, January, 34% of the um, people surfing in the pool were women, which is just incredible for surfing and such a great thing that we love to celebrate. And so what we're trying to do now is build cultures around that. So we have a female um, team within the park that's leading Girls Go Urban Surf, which is our female community. Um, we have events where it's just women surfing in the pool, all women staff, and then coming back and enjoying live music and events so that they can develop this community and, and really we can um, try and overcome some of the gender inequality that exists in surfing. Um, the World Surf League and surfing in general is doing a good job. We now have equal prize money in professional surfing. Um, and we're really seeing a push across the board to try and involve more women in surfing and more people from beyond the traditional surfing space. So, you know, um, surfing is now an Olympic sport, so it's important that, you know, people from all backgrounds get access to surfing and can enjoy the lifestyle that, that comes with it. Now, onto the fun part about this whole content here. Yep. Tell me a fun fact about Sean. Uh, a not so fun fact is Sean is one of the hardest working people here. Um, and I think the surf community owes a lot to Sean, he works really hard, he's here 24 hours a day, 7 days a week as far as I can tell. Um, the amazing thing about Sean as well is he doesn't come from a surf background um, and he spent a lot of his working career in places like Dubai that don't have surf and since we've had waves he's worked harder than anyone to improve his skills and he, you'll see him now regularly in cruiser and our progressive turns classes and he claims waves, he gets off the back line. <laughs> You've never seen anyone having so much fun and it's, it's awesome to see that when people that are involved in the business represent the business so well. So maybe not fun, but it's something cool is that Sean didn't surf before urban surf and now he, he loves it as much oh, as the rest of us. Okay, so. there you go. Now give me something about James, okay? Give me two truths and one lie and I'll guess the lie in that. Okay, so James has his own surfing podcast called Lips. James is the best bodyboarder that Urban Surf has ever seen. And James designed all of our wave settings at Urban Surf. I'm definitely not going to pick the bodybuilder one because clearly I think you are. Um, so the lie would be probably you did not design the waves here. Clearly there's a teamwork involved. I'm clearly not the best bodybuilder. Oh no! <laughs> family like we're very family orientated it's fun and we're incredibly safe like this is the epitome of like being an Australian and 
being in Australia is surfing and you couldn't pick a safer place than uh, Urban Surf to do it. Yeah, I think one of the other things that we offer is um, schools learn to surf and we also do a school water safety program. So kids can come in and in the morning they do a learn to surf and in the afternoon we do a water safety component that teaches people about rips because we, we have rips here in a controlled environment and so we can really show people um, how to be safe once they do get down to the ocean because obviously this should be a pathway to enjoying the ocean as well. So um, if any of the listeners out there you can get their school to go to our website and we've got all the information there and bring, bring the school kids out, learn to surf and also learn that water safety component which is really important. Uh, is it just going to be the lessons out there in the water or do you have a pre, pri obviously there's going to be a lesson prior to that, um, can we do something around that? So all of our learn to surf experiences in particular you do half an hour beforehand which is safety briefing, teaching you how to pop up, teaching you how to move around the water safely. We've had people here um, from all over the world that have never been in the ocean before, never been in the surf before and because you're never out of chest deep water it's entirely safe and so between the safety briefing the actual lesson and our great super qualified surf coaches and lifeguards, there's no safer place in the world to learn to surf. So you've got the concrete bottoms there um, under the water uh, as opposed to the actual ocean where it's sand, much softer. So how safe is that? Yeah, I would say that uh, surfing is a extreme sport, so it does come with its dangers. But uh, with all the practices and processes we put uh, in place from lifeguards to uh, safety briefings, um, it is really uh, safe with us. We, we make sure that you're fully educated before you, you step one foot into the water. So we really do our best to educate you and make sure you're comfortable at all times while you're having the best possible surf. Jack, you look stunning on your wetsuit. Let me just declare that up front. Thank you. Uh, give me an overview of what I'd be doing there. What lesson are you going to give me? All right, so today we're doing a learn to surf. We're going to walk, walk you out here in the Bay Area like these students have, are already out there doing. Um, and then I'm going to push you into a few waves. Hopefully you can get um, a few standing up. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then once we've caught a few waves, it's up to you, we can get dry or we can keep going. Yeah, okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. I certainly thought I'll be abjectly poor in surfing, but you know, I did try some good surf lessons and catch some good waves. So that was an exciting experience at Urban Surf Melbourne. I do insist a lot of the people who are interested in surfing, this is a very safe and controlled environment to participate in surfing, take surf lessons from the best expert surf coaches here. So after a session of surf, you can enjoy the hot chips and some Mountain Dew here at Tuga. And here with me are Fernando and Kimberly, who are here to say hi. 